So I've just finished watching the uh, getting start. What is it called? I think getting start with DevLink, uh, and the credits are rolling right now. So I'm literally just fresh off the boat with this one, and I thought I'd get down some of my thoughts, feelings, concerns, what I like, what I don't like, uh, in these early stages because uh, that's what we do here. Um, so I'm gonna. I've got my notes here. So if I'm looking down, it's because I was making notes during the whole thing. From my understanding, it is very straightforward actually from a technological standpoint. You are basically creating your components inside of Webflow uh, and whatever you define as a component, you can export them as separate components that you can then consume in your React app. And each one of those components is represented as a JavaScript file, which from a design perspective, you don't really need to worry about that. From a developer perspective, you don't need to worry about that because you should not be touching those JavaScript files because they'll only get wiped over the next time you do a sync anyway. So that, from a technological standpoint, that's, that's fair enough. It looks really cool. Um, they've thought about an awful lot. Um, I particularly like the fact that you've got slots and that you combine components. Uh, that's really cool. And they've even thought about the I forgot what they named it, but when you um, when you can call a function, basically, and all the rest of it. So they have thought about a lot. I was questioning these things because, um, of course, there's a lot more to React than just the tool React. And I'll get into specifically why React is terrible naming in this circumstance in a bit. But there's there's way more reasons that you would use React than just having components that look the way that they need to look. React has a different paradigm of thinking when it comes to building applications. And in fact, it completely changed the way we build or built front-end applications, uh, not specifically React, probably something like, um, what is it called? Something Bones, uh, Java Bones or something. Anyway, this componentized JavaScript approach just, just was brand new. So. Given that the paradigm is different, you know, when you look at a web project, you think, okay, these requirements plus these requirements plus these requirements probably would benefit from a React app. This maybe would be a Webflow website. This would be a Next.js website, whatever. The point is the paradigms are different. Um, I've, I've completely lost where I was going. Um, the issues are, is that their example was that you can build a marketing website and then you can reuse those assets in a SaaS application. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever worked on a SaaS application, but very rarely do the marketing website's components apply to a SaaS application. They very rarely share the same components. There's just a different UX, there's just a different, Marketing websites just want to be blah, 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 really trying to draw your attention to things, whereas it was a SaaS application needs to be a bit more refined, a bit more laid back and, and just do different things. So basically they very rarely share the same assets. So it was an interesting example that they gave there. However, I do like the example of the style guide and just creating a style guide from within Webflow. And the good news is you don't have to publish your application uh, sorry, website, you don't need a paid for account yet. Um, so you can basically build a style guide and then just consume that within within your React app. So that's great, but again, I'll get into that in just a second. So to talk about what I was um, mentioning earlier about React being the, the, a terrible name for this, uh, for them to use here, is that in the example that Ben created, he wasn't even using React, he was using Next, which is built on top of React, and those that know their, their, you know, their stuff will know the difference there. But as, a, as you guys, as a Webflow designer, for you to start throwing around or understanding projects as like, oh, React, I hear React, we can use Webflow with React, is dangerous. It's just enough information to be dangerous because, and I've mentioned this in my components uh, episode about React, that front-end applications are, or, or more specifically marketing sites that use React is a bad choice because what you're inevitably doing is you're serving a, just what a single div to the user 
and then you're pumping, you're loading stuff into that div with JavaScript. And that's terrible for SEO. It's getting better in caching and stuff like that. But more often than not, we lean on to stuff like Gatsby or Next.js, which is again, what Ben used. So they themselves aren't even using React. Um, yes, it's a React uh, framework around React, but it's, it's not React. And, and to know those differences are very important. You'd use React for something that you would lock it, you would log into, and you're not dependent on any kind of SEO or accessibility or anything like that because you're behind some sort of login, a SaaS application, which is what they described it as. So just being aware of that difference and knowing that when they say React, they don't actually mean React. If you are building a marketing site, for instance, with the, some of this stuff, it's just something to be aware of and just something to take note of and, and be mindful of, okay? Part of a lot of the content I make regarding Webflow on this channel is really coming down to helping Webflow designers improve the code that they're writing with Webflow. Because of a lack of understanding means stuff like, I've seen buttons as divs with hover effects on them and things like that, or just poorly made HTML, poorly written HTML. And you know what, I'm, what I mean when I'm doing that, because you're a no code tool, you're not actually writing code, but you are actually writing code. So. The point is the code or the component that's actually produced by DevLink is only as good as the code that you write as a Webflow designer. And uh, was that her name? Jennifer, the, the, the woman who was, who was demonstrating all this, she, she made a fantastic point that there needs to be that constant communication. So a developer will turn around and say, and who is likely to be more in tune with HTML and front end development will likely be like, hey man, you built that button wrong, or you've used excess styling or things like that. So there's gonna be a lot more interrogation, which starts to beg the question, is this, is this starting to slow the process down? Where are the benefits of this, this whole system? As cool as it is, and, as, and exciting it is, as it is kind of going to this beta period, it's just, it's just interesting. I'm just gonna double check. Which leads me on to Framer. And the most recent, my most recent video of Web Studio. Now, th what this is essentially doing is moving, allowing a developer to work with a Webflow designer. Whether you know you create a design system or something like this, um, however you go about doing this you're inevitably going to be working with a developer who knows React. You might be the same person. You might, you might be, and I think this is a rarity, you might be perfectly comfortable, more comfortable in Webflow, just doing the designy bits and then syncing it to your own React application, um, which, which is totally fine, but most likely you'll be working with a, with a React app um, developer. There already exists design tokens, which I've mentioned in the Web Studio uh, video, whereby you can stay in Figma, which you might be perfectly comfortable with. You can stay in Figma and export design tokens, which then a front-end application can consume. So already I'm thinking, well, why not avoid Webflow then altogether and say, well, don't bother building a style guide inside of Webflow. Do it in Figma where you feel more comfortable and we'll, we'll build that around design tokens. It, and then similarly, um, fig, uh, and then Framer itself, and again, Framer is also creating JavaScript uh, React components on the fly as well, similar to DevLink, but without the synchronization aspect and something that presumably I can just log into Framer and just take that code or whatever. Maybe Framer is gonna have a dev link thing because it is nice just to go, you know, Webflow sync or whatever. But people are really, Webflow designers are really enjoying how close Framer is to Figma as opposed to being this rigid web development tool. So, these aren't necessary criticisms. They're just, they're just thoughts that are going into my head of like, where is, what problem is this solving? Where is this going? Um, again, it's all early, early stages. I just, 
Yeah, you know, they, they decided not to focus on logic and memberships. They decided to focus on their core offering. Yet this sits just completely outside of that. So I just, I'm, I'm a bit lost as to, as to what it is. Don't get me wrong, like, tools are fun. Like, you know, tools are very fun. But let's not lose sight of the fact that this sits very much outside the wheelhouse of anyone using Webflow. So yeah, with all that being said, I'm, I'm just finding it hard to be really excited by it and just curious and almost worried again, knowing that it's very easy for a Webflow designer to fall into this trap of dragging and dropping whatever they want from the, from the, the, the ca onto the canvas and then thinking that's okay. So where does this take us when, they, when they're way more responsible for the code that a developer then needs? So, um, and I think that'll do it. Let me know what you think. Did you watch it? If you want to hear more about this, then do subscribe to the channel. Give us a like, show the algorithm who's boss. And check out all the links in the description for the tools that I like to use as well. And until next time, happy no coding.